Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Rob, this is RS. And not only is it Friday, it's a good Friday. It's been a very busy week. I hope you've all had a good week. Um, thank you for all the support over the weekend with the ATAP run. The dust is still settling and we're going to talk about that many, many, many more times in the coming weeks. But this week, we needed to talk about the Partizan Scout helmet, where we're up to, what's going on, and um, just give you a little bit of an update. As you can see, we've moved a step closer. We now have the signed plaques to accompany this. I'm waiting on some little bits of pieces, bit of printed material, bit of foam, and then probably over the next week, week and a half, two weeks, the majority of these are going to be shipping out. The plaque has been signed. This is by Neil Ellis, who worked on this helmet for the movie. Really good to see Neil again. It's been a long time. He visited the studio, which was fun, and he sat down to sign the plaques. Now, we did think about doing a podcast, but there were a number of reasons why that didn't happen. We don't need to go into them here. Maybe it still will in the future. Who knows? Um, but as he was sat down signing the plaques and we started talking and then Clarky started bringing microphones over and before you knew it, this happened. So you were a Star Wars fan before you got in, involved in the industry in that? Yeah, I was one of the first members of the Replica Prop Forum when it was AOL, before even the internet even existed. Really? I was, I think I was the second person to ever find a uh, MP, what's the Vader's lights? Oh yeah, MPP. MPP. I, w I went to a camera shop in Kingston, found two. He would only sell me one, and I think I, think I was the second person, at least, to, to find an MPP. So when... When would that have been then? When what? No, it, it was 1999, I guess. It was around about episode one. It was when, it, 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 that's when people started to get interested again, I guess. Yeah, that's when the 501st was starting, isn't it, and all that. Right, I mean, I, know, I remember Graham. Oh yeah. I remember Graham. More from, not so much from the RPF, but there was a UK version. AWOL? I don't know, I'm not familiar with it. Right, there was a there was a UK prop board. I think it was called AWOL, I think. I don't know why. I'd never met him personally, because I wasn't particularly into costuming then. I was just into weapons and you know, discovering stuff. Um so I never met him, but we conversed frequently on I think it was Absent Without Leave, I'm sure that was the name of the board. But anyway, RPF, all that sort of, all that sort of stuff. It's gone back a few years. It's still there, but it's it's still it's not the same. No, it's I mean, not I, I, you know, I I got my my Australian friends. I sourced the original to Tokyo from seventeen something, eight, early eighteenth century. You know, pineapple club. Mm. And I, again, I'm pretty sure I was one of the first people. To actually source a you know a vintage skull crusher, as they used to call it. So I was always into that sort of stuff. Yeah. So Dennis Murren was, uh, I suppose you could say supervising, but yeah, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I mean, it was more of a. I think he was just consulting, giving us. It was down to us ultimately. It was down to James Klein and uh, seventy-seven. Uh, what do we? He's seventy-seven now. Is he? Yeah. It was. It was obviously down to James Klein and Neil Lamont and Doug Chang as to what the falcon looked like at the end of the day. But he popped round for like a meeting. Me. Right. Winner. 
Visual Effects Jurassic Park. Winner, Terminator 2. Winner, The Abyss. Winner, Inner Space. Winner, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, I think it is. Winner, Return of the Jedi. Winner, E.T. Winner, Empire Strikes Back. Nominee, War of the Worlds, 2006. Tom Cruise, I think. AI, nominee. Star Wars Episode One nominee. Jurassic Park Lost World nominee. Willow, Young Sherlock Holmes and Dragon Slayers nominated all those times. Yeah, so imagine if he turns up in your workshop wanting to have a little quick discussion about where you think you're going with your model. It's like, what? So what happened was, which is quite funny, I, I was the first one who grew the bollocks to say, can I, can you please sign my chronicles? He was like, yeah, sure, sure. So I ran down like a, you know, dog on heat. Ran, sprinted down to the workshop, got my chronicles. Everyone was laughing. Came back up. He signed the page of the, at, you know, the full massive, I don't even know what it is. It's 18 by 10. It's a big book, right? Yeah. Signed that page. And then all the other guys who were acting cool just were like, fuck it. Okay. They just went sprinted and got their books. <laughs> yeah, and he spent a little bit of time signing our books. I mean, you don't get to meet Dennis Murren at work. You can meet him, you know, if you arrange a private signing, but you don't get to meet him at work any, anything more than once in your life, I think. I mean, if you look on my... You can see some of the shoddy stuff I did in the past like trying to sculpt Darth Maul out of plasticine over a polystyrene head in 1999 you know all that sort of trying to start off before I even the weird thing is I didn't realise you could just go and do a degree in model making I had no idea hmm. so did you do that? yeah yeah I went to University of Hertfordshire Almost everyone who's worked who works in the industry, at least in prop making and costume effects, haven't necessarily gone to Hertfordshire, but there's only there's about, you know, two or three universities that you can as long as you put in the time, do the work, you can walk away. Doesn't matter if you get a first, if you get best in class or a third or a two two, you can walk into the film industry. Hmm. You can do it. Is it easier now, do you think, than it was when you started? Um, if someone's watching and think, yeah, I want to wanna have a go? I mean, obviously this year has f***ed it up, what with actors and writers' strikes. So yeah. you, could, you could spend 25 grand on your degree and then spend... You know, anyone, anyone who graduated last year would have walked into six to eight months of unemployment. It'd be a nightmare but you know before that uh, before covid at least yeah you do your degree you have a half decent portfolio you have your show you walk into work you're given i think generally you're given a film to see if you you know can do it blend well, not even if you can do it because no one expects you to walk in and you know be able to do everything but if it's for you, you'll know more, as much as anyone else will. But yeah, it is doable. It's totally doable. It's it's more complicated now than it was five years ago, for sure. But I think once it picks up a little bit... But, well, it's all time, isn't it, making props? Well, that's it, yeah. All yeah. time. Yeah. You, you, it's not, you can't just bang one of those out in your spare time. There's so many layers. I mean, I've done a couple in my, in my time, and it's like 20 layers. Mm. Oh, shit. Where did they go to all that effort? Boba Fett was only ever really a side hustle. Right? It was never supposed to be anything. So even when the original costume was designed, it was a junior who made the Super Trooper. I mean, he's now one of the best art directors in the world, in the country, at least. But he, he at the time, he was like a... I don't even think he was 20. And he was gifted the job of, you know, 
outsourcing and engineering and making the Super Trooper become a thing. So it was between films as well, wasn't it? So they had plenty of time to uh, mess about with it. Well, I mean, look, if you've got someone whose sole job is to be a junior in the art department, they've got lots of free time. But whoever said to him, take this on, but you know what, he won't, he won't even take credit for it. Really? I've, sp I've spoken to him so many times about it, and he was like, mate, it was just one of those things. He's very, very humble. His name's Mark Harris, by the way. Oh, yeah. I've seen the T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mark, was it Mark Strikes Back or Mark Harris Strikes Back? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he was uh, he did the Falcon interior on Seven. All right. He was the art director for the uh, cockpit. Mad, right? I think it's pretty mad that he's gone from that to. I was helping him with some of the seats and the uh, the carbonite panels. You know the the eight carbonite panels that run down on Solo and Carbonite. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I managed to source some of those for him. The Volvo. Uh, yeah. The Volvo the inverted dash. Volvo dashboards. Yeah. Finding 3D files for the, the the rear seats and letting him know that the main seats were out of a Porsche and just nerd knowledge that you could just pass on. It's just yeah. insane, really. Funny. So they did try and replicate it as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Had it not been Mark, it abs it would have never looked as good as it did, for sure. He, he totally gets it. He's not a nerd by any stretch of the imagination, but he does give a shit about accuracy. So you've not been lured into the, into the circuit for signing? No, no one cares about no one cares. No, To be honest, it's only this year that I've finally found some managed to get Lucasfilm to give me some decent photos. They've got so many lovely photos of me and like Toby Hawks and that in costume on set, but they just don't give them out. Mainly because they know we're going to share them. Well, I'm going to share them. I mean, Toby, mate, but he knows that they know I will. Hmm. It's my glory days. So why do I not share them? And you're not allowed uh, to take any photos yourself on set, or well, in, in the... You're not. No, you're not. You're 100% not allowed. Having said that, half the photos I've ever taken have been published in their bloody magazines and books. So that you've taken yourself. All the model shots and the art of books. They're my. They're my photos. <laughs> that I wasn't allowed to take. <laughs> I know it's bullshit. <laughs> this is why I laugh when they have a go at me. It's like, well, do you know what? I mean, it's tricky though, isn't it? Because not everybody's... Just don't share them. Well, not everyone's respectful in that way. Well, no, but if you do share them before the movie comes out, that's the end of your career. And they should be able to treat you like an adult and understand that there's no one here. Look at this moment. I've just finished this. You know, it's mm. on a turntable. There's no one here to take the photo. What am I going to do? Yeah. Take the photo. Just don't share it until the time is right, you know? I mean, that's reasonable. I don't see that as a... I mean, but having said that, we, we, you know, there were situations where we had legitimate photos taken, printed out, watermarked for us, and then they ended up in the bin, and then a cleaner stole them and sold them on eBay. So it's like, well, you know, your official photos are now out there for the masses, or... Just let me take my own fucking photos. We're all grown-ups here. No one wants to end their career over a photo. Everybody's always interested in the behind-the-scenes stuff. I mean, that goes back to when we were kids, when we wanted to get as much Star Wars as we could, and all you could, all you could watch was the making of. Yeah. Remember that? And that, I think that spark the interest with people in, in making movies as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, you sign a contract and you have to abide by it. 
but you know at the end of the day if you're gonna if you're gonna publish photos that I wasn't supposed to take then it makes no sense unless you can have a you know an on-site photographer documenting the making of forget about it You're talking about you now it's an it's you know they were supposed to be the making of seven eight and nine books come but it never happened we just had the art of mm. which only really i mean i was lucky to get into it because i was in the art department but had i been in there's no costume in there at all there's no costume and you can't rely on what you look at you know what you see on lucasfilm or website because if it, according to them they made l3 it's like what are you talking about an entire costume department built it around the actress and every single bit of digital work that you see in that was scanned off of gubbins that were cobbled together by my team it's mm. like what are you talking about how have you got credit for that it's like when you watch i mean don't 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 impose this but it's when you watch So how do the credits in, in movies work? Like, do you get credit in every movie? I've, I've, I've been, luckily, I've been credited in every movie except one. But if you... If I'm, I'm going to have to ask, which was the one? Men in Black 3, Men in Black 4. Men, Men in Black, Black 4, is that the one without Will Smith? Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, you Many know, people consider that the best, Men in Black. It's not, it's not the worst but it's not the best. I mean, it's got some decent bits in it. I loved, I so loved how, working on that. So how do you not get a credit? Um, I think Sony was a slightly stingy about the... It, it's all down to how many minutes. You get cinema time, right? If you think you've got three minutes of screen wasted on credits, that shows ten times a day. Mm-hmm in one cinema times how many cinemas in the world thousands yeah so that's hours and hours of screen time spent on on when people are just filtering out the cinema yeah so it's irrelevant screen time it doesn't earn them a thing whereas with star wars they're actually really generous with their credits i think it runs kind of slow everyone gets a credit literally everyone gets a credit as long as you're on contract if you go in for like two weeks of dailies you're not going to get a credit anywhere ever in the history of film but if you've got a contract and you sign that contract and you don't get fired and you don't get caught nicking anything then you'll end up with a credit <laughs> <laughs> so what's the favorite thing you've made in any film I think L1 oh I don't know Saw Gerrera maybe but that was I shared that with Paul Marsh maybe the guts on L3 maybe Solo Speeder I think probably Emphy's Nest Swoop oh yeah who knows who knows Krennic Shuttle not Ray Speeder not the not the uh Magnum bar flipped on its side, but yeah, tons of. Did things. you do that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of things, and they're almost all Star Wars. And so the best quite... movie I've worked on, hands down, no questions asked, is Edge of Tomorrow. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh yeah, I heard, I heard. Um... Such a great. I mean, I could watch that over and over again. Gravity was good to work on, but it's one of those films where you. Did you do the the suits, the full suit? That you... No, I sculpted I sculpted the lower half waist down, and that was then scanned and remodelled in SolidWorks. So that was yeah, that was nice. But just as a movie in general, such a great movie. Original, timeless. I think. That will still hold up in 10 years' time. Live, die, repeat. Yeah, I reckon. Edge of tomorrow. Yeah, I reckon that will still hold up in 10 years' time. It's funny as f***. 
Why are they talking about trying watching to do a Tom, sequel? Watching Tom Cruise. They were, yeah. Watching him get killed every five minutes is mm. genius. Uh, they were, and I think they both signed off on it, but who knows. I saw the other day, and I don't know if it was just bullshit, internet bullshit, or if it's actually happening. But I saw something about a Risky Business sequel. Oh, really? Hmm. Rusty Brisket. I can't believe that. Who knows? I mean, if anything, I'd want to see Rain Man. I'd want to see them hook up again. I can't imagine Risky Business. Who knows? I don't know if it's going to have the same humour. As? As the original. If it is actually real. But I'm conflicted because I'd love to see a sequel, but at the same time, is it just going to be a mess? I mean, most sequels are, I think. How many can you name? That were Good sequels. Yeah. Six? Aside, six. Aside from ESB. Empire, Aliens, Godfather, Blade Runner. Terminator 2. Yeah. That's probably it, isn't it? Probably, yeah. That's probably it. Sequels where they're actually where they actually add something to the original as well. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like it's not just there for the sake of it. Expands on the story. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to, if it's as good as, then I suppose it doesn't need to, but there's no reason for it. I think that's probably the six that I was thinking of. Oh, Back to the Future. Oh yeah. Yeah. Apart from them, I reckon that's yeah, here a lot. Three's not going very good, is it? No, three's not very good. It's all right. It's got its moments, but like Jedi. I mean, I like Jedi because I was a kid, but fucking hell, it's the sh shocking compared to the other two. Yeah. Except for the design, that obviously. I mean, some of the best stuff is in that film, but. Yeah, Ireland made some nice stuff, didn't they? Yeah. Just the just the whole Endor. I mean, Endor's the worst. But the Scout Walker, all the animation on that, when it's tripping over those logs, that's just insane. All the stuff on the bikes, mental. The Rancor puppetry, so good. So you were a uh, a weapons guy then? I was. I, yeah, that was my thing. But I, I don't think I've ever made, apart from Men in Black, I don't think I've made... Have I made any weapons for any other film? No. Men in Black's the only thing I've done weapons for. But, I mean, that was your... When you were into replica props. Yeah, yeah, it was all about... That was... But not so much that, making them, finding No, them, that was the thing that you... Um, that got me into the replica prop form, yeah. Yeah, that you enjoyed from the, from the movies. No, no, miniatures also. I was a bigger miniature fan than I was... Oh, the scale models. Yeah, yeah, but it's easier to build a E11 than it is to build a f***ing yeah. Millennium, Fal you know, <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a different community again, isn't it? The Same group, scale though. modeler guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was the first person to make Tidarium, Studio Scale Tidarium. I was the first one to ever, from, with help... Like, I, I bashing. Yeah, from scratch, but I identify every single kit part and, you know, built... Like, when it's flying, it's... You know, it's looking enormous. It's massive. Even landed, it's like that. Uh, and that was that was mold. I sold the patterns to someone in the states, and they I did it in, as a university project actually. And they uh, they produced it as a kit, but it was just so expensive. The wings are so delicate. It's just it just didn't work as a as a financial project. It was just not worth it. Too much hard work. Just build it from scratch on your own, to be honest. You know, Falcon's a lot bone with bits stuck on, you know what I mean? Hamburger. Yeah, 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 it's a bit easier. I mean, it's not easier, it's a, I think it's, how many, 120 something kits? 120 Tamiya kits you have to buy in order to build a Falcon? It's mad. It costs you two yeah. grand just in kits to build it. Yeah, they're not, not cheap these days, are they? No, well, they're getting worse, isn't it? It's get, they're all getting bought up. Yeah. All these people building bloody falcons. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think miniatures was my main thing. And then props. But not so much, you know, I was never interested in the episode one, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon lightsaber stuff that's beautifully made, but it's all just machine from Billet. I'm much more of a, a found found object guy when it comes to Star Wars. I love the fact they just found that stuff and just chucked it over a threaded rod with a couple of bolts of you. madness. Okay guys, there we go. Uh, great to see Neil. The plaques are now signed. A couple of little pieces to do to finish this helmet. Just waiting for some printed material, helmet foams. Now we've confirmed what was going on inside it. And these are gonna be leaving here over the next couple of weeks. Um, it's a short week next week due to Easter, but I don't see this taking too long now to wrap up. And the majority of these helmets will be shipping. Um, Simon's painting the last few. Project's going well, project's coming to an end. And sad to see the back of it in a lot of ways because this has been a great helmet to work on and it's got a special place in our hearts. I hope it will in yours when you receive them. What can I say? Before I get too cheesy, thanks for joining us this time. Join us back here next Friday where I'm not sure what we're going to be doing just yet. Probably an update on the Bausch. May talk about that, at, who knows? We may round everything up into a big studio walk. There's a lot going on. Only way you'll know is if you come back next time. I'll see you then.